What's going on everybody? So today I want to go over uh, holsters. Um, I, I get questions fairly re uh, frequently about why I use specific holsters that I do. Um, so I figured I'd just go over that and explain you know, my reasoning for it and uh, also offer a bit of a, or at least what I have available, a guide to what type of holsters uh, are available and maybe some recommendations I can offer for ones to use. So this video, it'll be kind of for everybody, but it's kind of tailored more to new shooters. Um, now I'm sure there's gonna be people who are gonna comment on this video offering their opinion, that's fine, that's great. Um, I would definitely encourage that. I'm just, I'm just telling you what it is I have and what I use and why I use it. As well as uh, I'm also gonna explain uh, retention levels as well, just so people kind of have an understanding of uh, holster levels of retention. So getting into it, the first thing you gotta look at is, is um, application. So is this a range gun? Is it a concealed carry gun? Is it a duty gun? Um, now here in Canada, we only have uh, range availability. Like we don't have any carry laws whatsoever with the exception of police, you know, uh, and certain security types. Um, so duty carry is off, is off, duty carry and concealed carry is out of the question for people like me. Um, but that being said, I still have some holsters I'd like to show you anyways. So getting into it, first thing we got to look at, um, once you've decided your application, what it's using for, you need to look at levels of retention. So what I mean by levels of retention, so th there's kind of two different styles of retention that I, I'm going to have to explain really quick. So number one um, is the difference between certain manufacturers. Now, but what I mean by that is like, like Blackhawk, uh, Phobus, um, you know, uh, like custom Kydex brands, uh, things like that. Um, for most manufacturers, something like this right here, this is a level one holster. So when you hear somebody say, oh yeah, I have a level one, this, this, and that, they're talking about something like this style. So a level one for normal manufacturers is a basic retention holster. So all it does is retain the gun in the holster. Um, there's no levels of, as you can see, there's no levels of security to it. So what I mean by security is if I grab the gun, I can just, I can just pull it free. There's nothing holding the gun in place. So that, uh, that's definitely one thing. Now, to a company like Safari Land, uh, this is a level nothing. This this isn't anything to them. A level one holster to Safari Land is when our Safari Land's like uh, leveling system goes by levels of retention, not or uh, security more so, not so much just how it retains the gun. So to Safari Land, something like this right here, this is an ALS. This is a level one. And so to most other manufacturers, this would actually be considered a level two. To Safari Land, it's a level one because it's got one level of active retention. So right now, the gun doesn't come out, it's locked into place. So it's got level one security. So by that, as soon as I push this down, it'll pull the gun free. So now, now the gun's free and ready to use. So that, that's a level one. To most other manufacturers, that's a level two. So a good example is this is a, this is a um, soul, soul can holster uh, made by the guys that sold a Canadian, Tim Smith. Great guy, by the way. Um, you should definitely check them out. Uh, to him and his company and many others like it, this is a level two. All right. So the, now it's got one level of security. It looks like a hood. Now this is a basic hood release system. So just to show you, I'm going to push this to the left and it's going to automatically release the hood. Okay, so now I've gone from a level two to a level one retention. To Safari Land, I went from a level one to a level zero. All right, now these types of holsters um, are good, like the ALS style, things like that. These are good for the range. Um, I actually prefer level one holsters. Uh, Safari Land is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, for the simple reason of security. So if I'm running around doing my thing, I had an incident last year uh, with, my, with one of my Berettas where I was using this holster. I was running and I fell. I just, I, 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 I what, the, what I tripped on, I have no idea. But I fell and the gun did this. And fell right out of the holster. Now, ignoring the fact that that's a massive safety concern, um, the gun, I, you know, I lost my gun. I, draw, I dropped my gun. So that's why I've since switched over to, pretty much all of my holsters have some sort of active retention, whether it be a hood or a, an ALS release, something like that. All of my holsters that I use now have active retention. Now, if you want to get more into the duty side of things, yeah, he said duty. Um, if you want to get more into the duty side of things, you've got something like this here. 
So this is a Safari Land SLS. Um, I've got about three of these. Which one's this for? That's for my MMP. Okay, where, where is my MMP? Um, so this is a Safari Land level two. So by level two, so it's got two levels of security. The hood is level one and the locking system is level two. So what this is, is in order to release the pistol at a place, first thing I have to do is right here, you see that big button there? I have to push down, okay? So at that point I've released the lock. So now the holster's down to a level one holster. Now to release the gun, I've got to, again, I've got to push it forward. So this is what you'd call a level two. Now for range use, this is completely unnecessary. Something like this is way overboard for what you need. And Safari Land also produces a level three. So their version of a level three is you've got level one, level two, and then there's actually an ALS release that's right here. So in order, you've got three levels of locking. Now this is like law enforcement, uh, open duty carry. This is not a range holster. I, I wouldn't even consider this as a holster for open carry or WROL. This is just too much. The reason holsters like this exist is for uh, law enforcement, things like that. It's if somebody tries to get your gun. So you can see this one um, ha actually has a, a front guard. So you can't access the release from the front of the holster. You have to be behind the holster in order to uh, get it out. So that's what holsters like this are for. This is so that somebody can't easily take your gun from you from the holster. You know, they're fast enough. Like, like with holsters like this, I can draw on fire in one second. I, I'm fairly frequent at that. Um, so slowing you down isn't really that bad. But that's just something to consider for... Like, I mean, they're, they're fun holsters to use. They're just a little bit much for range use. Now, you can get into things a little more exotic, uh, like something like this holster for the APX. Um, this is just a leather, uh, basic level, level, or I guess it would be called a level two um, retention holster. Now, I hate holsters like this for the simple reason uh, of the fact that in order to release it, it's just a button. So you gotta... You gotta just release the button and then you can yank the pistol out. Not a, I'm not a big fan of these holsters. That and the leather, it, surprisingly, is fairly hard on the gun, the gun's finish. And the APX, uh, I've discovered this with its uh, serrations, just cuts the shit out of the inside of this holster. So I'm, I'm not big fans of this style. Another style that I actually don't own because I hate them is, now this is as close as I have to it, but this is the... Uh, this is a, a or, um, w would be considered a, a, a trigger finger release. So holsters like this, um, I hate for the simple reason of in order to release the gun. Now again, it's level two, it's active retention. Um, in order to release this, I have to put my finger, I have to use my trigger finger to release it, not my thumb, like you'd see with something like the ALS. With the ALS, it's just the thumb release. Release it with my thumb and out she comes, right? With, uh, with holsters like this, it's done with the trigger finger. Now, this is um, kind of a hotly debated topic of safety. Um, there's another company, uh, the, the Blackhawk, like the Serpa style. Um, they are con actually considered to be quite dangerous because the release is right here, right? So with the Serpa style, if I release the pistol, look where my finger lands. And there's numerous documented cases of people releasing the holster and then the first thing they do, is the release, and then their, their finger immediately lands on that trigger, and they end up setting it off. Now, there's been several recorded instances of people shooting themselves doing that, and uh, big uh, um, shooting sports associations like the uh, IPSC, for example, or IPSC, actually ban Serpa holsters because it is a problem. Now, holsters like this uh, specific one, this is one that actually ships with the Canik, it's terrible. Um, I hate it, but at least, and again, I, I don't want to sound like I'm defending this, but I'll, I'll defend it a little bit. The release, so when I release, I have to pull back, not push down. So I'm going to pull back, release, and my finger at least ends up where, pretty much where you want it. Now, that being said, personally, I would still try and talk you out of this holster. They're not very good holsters. And on a side note, one thing you actually want to also consider is if you have an optic on your pistol. So if you're, if you're running optics on your pistols, you're gonna need a holster that's got a race, or what's called a race cut. So that basically leaves room for the optic. Um, now you can get holsters like this without the retention. Uh, most of them are custom Kydex holsters, but you can get holsters like this without uh, active retention. I just personally prefer active retention for the simple sake of security. It's just ever since I had that incident where uh, 
My, my M9A3 fell out of the holster. This isn't an A3, by the way. My M9A3 fell out of the holster, and obviously I was DQ'd from that, from that match, but it, it's, that really, really scared me. Uh, that I actually had a, hol uh, a holster uh, with a loaded gun fall out. Like, that's, that's, that's a real, real, real issue. So, it's just something to, something to consider when, uh, when buying a holster. Now, you yourself really need to do the research as to what type of holster is best for your situation. Um, if it's duty, obviously you want, uh, I would say a minimum level two or higher from Safari Land or most, most other manufacturers that you offer to, you want like a level three from them for the simple sake of safety. Um, but it's all personal preference. Uh, I'm just offering a guide of some of the, some of the holsters that I like to use. One of these actually are the, the basic level twos for most manufacturers, the level ones from Safari Land are probably my favorite just because they give you the security you want, but releasing them is quick. They're very, very quick to release, like the ALS here. So this one is actually my favorite. Now the simple reason is, is when you go to draw and fire from an ALS holster, as soon as you go to grip the gun, the second your hand goes to grip it, your thumb just instinctively lands right on the release mechanism. And it's a simple doing that. And as you do that, your thumb actually puts pressure on the gun and release it and actually pulls the gun from the holster. So it's a very safe system to use, but it's also fast. I can draw and fire, and my average time for this is 0.89 from a holster like this to draw and fire my first shot. So that's pretty impressive, at least to me, that's pretty impressive, especially with an active retention holster. Now, if you're competing, that's a whole different ball game. If you get into actual like real deal competition where like milliseconds matter, you'd want just a basic old race holster, like something that literally pretty much hangs onto the trigger guard and nothing else. Like the, the less time you have to actually draw, actually get that holster cleared before you can draw, it, the better. So that's, that's a whole different thing. But this is just kind of a basic rundown of some of the holsters that I use and maybe some uh, recommendations for you. Thanks everybody for watching and I will see y'all next time.